any part of our body can get a tumor and in fact what is a tumor a tumor is a growth of abnormal cells in that particular region when this abnormal growth happens inside the brain we call it as a brain tumor and this majorly occurs due to abnormal genetic code or disruption in the regular programming of the cell through the dna once it starts growing on there might be loss of checkpoints to stop its growth or inhibitory or regulatory process which uh, there might be complex process which involved to stop this and once these all are disrupted the tumor cells which start growing 1 2 4 8 and all they keep on dividing into number of cells and become a lump that is what we call as brain tumor so primarily we divide brain tumors into two types primary brain tumors secondary brain tumors primary brain tumors arise from the natural brain tissue and the secondary brain tumors arise from non brain origin that means there might be some cancers somewhere in the body and these might have been seeded into the brain and they start growing inside the brain so these are called secondary brain tumors so most commonly the secondary brain tumors occur because of cancer metastasis and these are the most common than compared to the primary brain tumors and almost around 25 to 45% of cancer patients who have uh, advanced stage uh, cancer definitely uh, end up having brain tumors that are secondary brain metastasis and most common of all them is lung cancer which uh, sends its seeds to the brain and uh, lung primary lung metastasis to brain almost there are around 50% of the cases in the advanced lung cancer and the next common is the breast cancer and also one more thing is skin cancer called melanoma and melanoma has very high propensity to uh, travel to the brain and start growing there as secondary metastasis almost 50% of melanoma cases develop brain metastasis and these are so aggressive that once they grow into brain the treatment becomes very difficult and surgery also becomes difficult and uh, to mention a few other cells include renal colorectal etc and sorry okay so now we come back to the primary brain tumors so as we know our brain is inside the cranium and uh, the cranium uh, and the brain are separated by a layer of thin layers called meninges so the deeper most part is the brain and covering that brain is the meninges and meninges above the meninges are the skull so the primary brain tumor Uh, arises from these meninges are the parts of the brain and brain is made up of different types of cells like neurons astrocytes oligodendrocytes and epididymomas these are different cells with different functionalities and they will be located in different parts of the brain or they will be uh, their concentration changes with the areas of the brain like epididymal cells uh, occupy most of the canalicular systems like around the ventricles oligodendrocytes and astrocytes they are most of the uh, mostly they are in the connective tissues inside the brain and the neurons are the principal uh, signal carrying cells are the primary brain cells so in brain tumors again we can divide them into uh, tumors or cancers tumors are benign tumors which grow slowly and they are not that harmful as of cancers whereas cancers are very aggressive they can infiltrate into the surrounding tissues and they might be more dangerous so most common brain tumors are meningiomas which arise from the meninges there are the layers around the brain and the second most are the gliomas they arise from the uh, different cells i have said inside brain like astrocytomas oligodendroglyomas oligoastrocytomas ependymomas etc in the aggressive forms there might be glioblastomas and the next common uh, brain tumors are pituitary adenomas which occur in the pituitary glands so how many types of brain tumors are there it's uh, really difficult to enumerate and we have come up with who classification classifying them from grade 1 to grade 4 a lot of number of brain tumors based on the histology of the cells so most common in the, uh, the tumors which we see in our practice are been uh, given in this picture like as you can see meningiomas oligodendrogliomas astrocytomas supratendoral ependymomas and optic gliomas these arise from the tissue surrounding the optic nerve and craniopharyngiomas these arise around the uh, pituitary and surrounding tissues in the cella torsica 
and the primary pituitary tumors, pineal region tumors arising from the pineal glands, schwannomas. These arise from the uh, schwann, schwann cells surrounding the nose sheets of the uh, thing. Then most of the times, the schwannomas occur in the CP angle. There is a um, cerebellum pontan angle, uh, which I'll come back to show you. And uh, brainstem gliomas occur inside the brain. And ependymomas occur from the lining of the ventricular ventricles or the cerebrospinal canal. So, how do you know if a tumor is this a cancer or not? So, they are definitely distinguished by few characteristics. Like benign, they will be slow growing, non-invasive, and they don't spread around, and less likely to recur if they have been removed. Malignant tumors, they are fast growing, aggressively invasive and they may spread to distant parts of the body if they left untreated. And even after treatment, there is a chance that they may recur back. So for example, benign most common is a meningioma and malignant most common is a glioma. And these uh, can be graded based on their aggressiveness and the presence. And most commonly we see grade one meningiomas almost around 92%. And uh, the higher grades which turn towards the uh, malignant side are very less around 6 to 2%. On the other side, if you see gliomas, we see most of the times, uh, if you live untreated in the early stages, also they immediately turn into glioblastomas, that is higher grades, grade three and grade four. And these are more aggressive, more common. And uh, the moment you have a high grade uh, gliomas, the chance of survival comes becomes very less, something around average 15 to 24 months. And grade one, gliomas are like pilocytic astrocytomas etc they uh, have certain characteristics similar to uh, benign tumors so they are slow growing and uh, they can be surgically curable so it's the important thing what we have to remember is the key is to find the tumor as early as possible so the chances of cure are very high so we have been talking that there is a brain tumor but how do they cause a problem how do we get uh, affected by these tumors? They might be there inside the brain, they might be slowly growing or why? The thing is, our whole brain is inside the cranium and there is no more space and there is a closer space. The moment the tumor keeps on growing in size, it causes a mass effect. <clears throat> that means it starts slowly pushing the brain tissue surrounding it to occupy its own space. So the neural cells which are in this pushed away tissues gets affected and the functionality uh, that are uh, being done by these areas will get affected. So that is called mass affected. And the other thing is local invasion. These tumors invade into the normal brain tissues at the level of microscopic level. So, but even though we can't see it grossly, they will be infiltrating into surrounding tissues in three dimensionally. So with this local invasion also, they can disturb the functionality of the surrounding brain tissues. And the other thing is edema, that is swelling around the tumor. When there is a uh, mass that is developing inside the brain, there is chance that inflammatory reaction happens surrounding it. Like our immunity won't sit quite, so it starts producing some inflammatory reaction surrounding the brain, uh, the, the tumor. So these all uh, develop into a swelling or edema. And this edema also adds to the pressure effect on the surrounding brain tissues. As you can see in the upper part, there is a large brain tumor in this image, which is causing the mass effect and it is pushing the almost half of the brain towards the other side. And in the lower side, you can see there is a tumor and there is a surrounding uh, gray area, which is the edema or the swelling, which is also adding up to the pressure effect.